Okay, so this is the jam that everybody is probably out there waiting for. How to make the old fashioned strawberry jam. So again, I've soaked my berries overnight in sugar. I have eight cups, again, don't go over eight cups of berries when you're doing strawberries, and six cups of sugar in here, because yeah, I do it the same way grandma did. Don't mess with what grandma did, guys. Mm -mm. She knew what she was doing. Okay. But the only thing I do is because I really don't like these um, chunkies in my jam, is I pulverize it. So I've just turned my heat on to it. It's on a uh, medium high heat. But I am going to hit this with the emulsion blender, which you think I would have ready, but no. Just to make this a nice, beautiful, smooth, silky strawberry jam. Mmm, the best kind. In my opinion, the only kind there is. Ugh. Guys, you're in my way. You're in my way this time. Okay. is just beautiful silky jam mm. now if you want those little bits in there just leave it we're gonna get personal again but like I said I I just don't like don't like it you can use a potato masher if you want lots of people do that I prefer that silky jam Okay, now we're pretty much going to be doing the exact same thing as we did with those other two jams. Which, hopefully, you've seen on yesterday's video. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. So you can see that is beautiful. That is silky. Oh, gosh, guys. This is my most favorite kind of jam there is. I have my jars already ready. I have some spoons, some plastic spoons in the freezer again, uh, getting cold. There were a few left over from the last time, but I wanted to make sure I put some extra ones in there just in case. Okay, yes, and if you haven't seen the other video, I do a lot of explaining, explaining, explaining on the other one for doing the long boil jams. Um, but uh, I, myself, I like to soak my berries overnight in the fridge in the sugar so in that way they create their natural sweet, uh, sh what is that, sauce, I guess you could say, um, on their own. I just personally, I find that to be the best way to do it. Instead of forcing it to happen, let it do it naturally. I never make jam when it's raining. Again, I have no idea if that is just an old wives tale or what that is, but I just don't do it. it I've never had jam set up for me, even using pectin, if it's raining, so I just don't do it anymore. Um, yeah, I really can't think of what else I said on that video, so just go back and watch that one. I'll link it. 
or I'll try to link it. <laughs> I know I'm bad for those cards, guys. I know that. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but these jams are done. They've processed one already for 10 minutes, and I turned them off. I just um, took the lid off of it. It's still on there, but it's off of it. That's how I let mine cool down for a bit. I'll just let them sit there for about 5-10 minutes, or until I get to it, <laughs> which is probably like in 15-20 minutes from now, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I'm bad for that. Okay, but literally you just want to bring this up to a boil and again according to the thermometer thing you want to bring it up to um, 220 Fahrenheit or 104. Huh? Did I remember it right? 104? Huh, I did. So 220 Fahrenheit or 104 Celsius and uh, yeah, but again, I normally just use the uh, the sheeting test or sheathing test, whatever you want to call it. I don't do the plate because the plate drives me nuts. I personally much rather just check it off of the spoon. I have better luck with that. And again, but we'll use the thermometer again this time, but I'll use my cooking thermometer because apparently my candy thermometer is broken. So I'll have to maybe look at getting a new one or just saying poop on it and just stick with the thermometer I have and I'll just keep using that for everything. It's easier for me anyway. It's a digital one. Let's see what it's at right now. Considering I just turned it on, it's... Oh, we have a... It looks like it's it's probably it's moving on its own I know it's not boiling yet but what's it at it's climbing it's at 133 yeah we're gonna say 133 Fahrenheit so it's it's got a small little it's starting to boil But according to that, you want to get it up to 120. So let's let's do that. We'll get it up to 120. And like I said, it normally takes three to five minutes. And you want to keep that steady hard boil, but not that stupid hard boil. Just a steady hard boil. That's the key, guys. That steady hard boil. You just gotta get it there. That's the thing. And this isn't my hot burner. This one here, over here, it's my hot burner. I know not to pressure can on it. Because <laughs> I can't keep control of my pressure canner when I have it on that burner. But I water bath can on that one. Okay, so I'm going to bring you guys back when this gets up to that hard boil. Because I'm going to get these jars out of the water. So that way I can put my other jars in there. So we'll be right back. Okay. So you can see it's at that boil now, so let's take a look and see how hot it is. It's almost there, it's at 213. It kind of stopped there, 213. See, and this is also why I stir it, it helps keep that foam down. But I was taking those other jars out of the canner, so. Mwah, mwah, that's okay. It'll still taste darn good. On some toast with some sun butter. Woo! Oh my goodness. I wonder what this would taste like. Strawberry? Okay, yeah, okay, guys, picture this. Let's see how this, it'd probably be absolutely disgusting, but the thought of it sounds really good. Sun butter, strawberry jam, and avocado. Oh, that sounds so good. That sounds like a dessert. Oh. Okay, guys, I'm hoping I have a little bit of jam left just so I can make that. <laughs> I 
Okay, and we are coming up to boiling for three minutes. We're at that three minute mark. Okay, so let's grab that thermometer again. See where she's at now. And I hate having it boil over, so that's why I try and keep it moving. Have you ever had to clean jam up off your stove before? Oh, it's not fun. Yeah, so we're still in the same spot it was. Okay, so it hasn't gone up any. So we still got a few minutes. Or moments. I say minutes. I probably I mean moments. Probably a minute. And guys, I'm working on my third batch of jam. And I started doing this at 8.15 in the morning. And it is now, oh wow, it's 10 to 10 now, <laughs> much later than I thought it was. That's okay. Oh, that just means I'll enjoy a lunch. I <laughs> wonder what I'll have for lunch today. Nah, who am I kidding? I know what I'm going to have. I really want to have that toast now. It's in my head. That's what I want. Okay. You guys can see it's not that it's not that scary to make long boiled jams. They make it seem like it's so scary and so difficult to do, but it isn't. As long as you got the know-how and you got the want to learn how to do it, psh, you'll have it mastered in no time. Like I said in the other video, yeah, you're going to end up with some bad batches. But you know what? Those bad batches still work for something. If it doesn't gel, you got syrup. If it uh, is a soft gel, then you just got a soft jam. There's nothing wrong with that. If you get that perfect gel, then you got a great jam. Then hey, there's nothing wrong with that either. And if you end up over gelling it and you get a, <laughs> you get cranberry jelly, or cranberry jam, whatever that they call that stuff that comes out of a can and it wiggles. Oh, that's disgusting. But it works for something. And if you can figure out what, let me know because I have about five jars downstairs of it. That I don't want to throw out because it tastes oh so good. But I can't figure out what to do with it. Okay, so let's test this again. Let's see where we are on this thing. I'm not even going to test the gel on it until it gets to 220 and we'll see what it does. Yeah, it's not getting past that point. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to bring you guys back when it gets to 220. So we'll be back. Okay, guys, so I'm testing this because I took it off my spoon. And it hasn't even reached 220 yet. That right there is what you're looking for. Guys, and that's hot. This is done. right there and this has not reached 220 that's why I don't trust that thermometer thing go by your gut go by what it looks like get a spoon if you can do that you're done okay so I'm gonna get the jars ready and we'll be right back okay so we are now ready and no I don't take the foam off of my jams sorry guys you want to go right ahead, but I don't. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that foam. I think that foam is quite tasty. So we just got to fill it up to quarter of an inch headspace. And yes, I have three canning funnels. I personally believe in having more than one 
for reasons just like this when I get canning. Do you think I want to sit there and do a whole bunch of dishes just so I can keep going? Heck no. It only costs a few bucks. And when you really get going, sometimes it helps. Gosh, guys, look how beautiful this is. Look at that color. Look, oh, it's just so gorgeous. Now I have eight jars here ready to go. I normally find I get between six to eight jars when I do it this way. Just all the pens, every time is different. And I'll be okay if I have extra heat. I'll be very okay with it. You know, guys, if this doesn't set up, well, then you know what? That's okay because I got strawberry syrup. I'm pretty sure this is going to set up just fine, though, because uh, you can see on the canner funnel here. It's not coming back together. Oh, I do. I have extra for the fridge. Sweet! And yes, no, I don't debubble my jams because I pure... I blend it and make it smooth. If your jam has chunks in it, like a traditional jam, then yes, you need to debubble it. But this doesn't have any chunks in it to create any air bubbles, so. I don't debubble this. So we're just going to wipe these rims up, and I really didn't make any mess with this jam this time. The other jams, I made a hell of a mess. Just gonna get these wiped up good and clean. Hot. I think I already did that one, but let's just triple check. Okay. Get our lids. And this one I don't need to label because I can clearly see it's strawberry. Then lids, fingertip tight, pull your hair out of it. And then again into the water bath canner for 10 minutes and then they need to rest in there for 5 minutes afterwards. So, I'll bring you guys back when these bad boys are out of the canner. Alright, so here they are, out of the canner. I'm just doing one simple ending for both videos because, well, that's what I'm doing. So, <clears throat> here are the strawberry blueberry ones, here are the strawberry ones, and here are the mixed berry ones. So I got eight jars from each batch, plus this leftover, and I was right by the way, sun butter, strawberry jam, and avocado on top. Oh, it was so good. Now this has been in the fridge for about 20 minutes, and I was stirring it for about 10 minutes to try and cool it down beforehand, but I just wanted to show you guys. Here it is. Now this, this one probably won't set very well because like I said, I was stirring it, trying to cool it down. But here it is. It's a very soft gel. And like I said, 
this will probably thicken up these ones here will probably thicken up because I'm not going to be stirring them but honestly this is how I like jam right here that nice simple soft gel if you want it firmer than that you just got to boil it longer until you get to the consistency you want but for me this right here this is what I want so I hope you guys enjoy the video any questions for me leave them down below and don't forget to share and like and I'll see you soon